All right. Well, welcome all. Welcome to the Monday, May 10th, 2021, regular meeting of the Town of Easton Planning and Zoning Board. In keeping with the ongoing emergency order from Governor Charlie Baker to limit gatherings and maximize social distancing and under legislation passed to address remote board meetings during the emergency declaration, this meeting will be conducted remotely over Zoom. Attendance by board members will be remote and remote attendance shall count towards a quorum. The meeting will also be available on ECAST. To use Zoom, you'll need to use the link on the agenda or download the Zoom application, excuse me, and create an account. You will need the webinar ID to join by phone only. While conducting meetings remotely, we will endeavor to keep meeting operations as close to our standard procedures as possible. <laughs> However, use of this platform will necessitate some additional meeting protocols. One, while the board members or commissioners and applicants will be on video and audio, public participants will join the webinar as attendee, meaning they are muted with no video feed from them. During the public testimony portion, of the meeting, members of the public can be recognized by using the raised hand function from Zoom or make a request with the Q&A function from Zoom. If you are joining only by phone, you can press star nine to raise your hand. If an applicant wishes to display materials, please make the request of the chair and email the materials to the board staff prior to the meeting for sharing on screen. When starting testimony, please state your name and address for the record. Um, Let's see, uh, bah, bah, bah. board members are asked to announce themselves when making motion and a second so that it will be clear to the audience and minute takers who made motions. All votes will be by roll call. There's further information or if you'd like to read these yourself on the town's website under the calendar, go to today's date and click on the planning and zoning board meeting agenda. Um, so as I mentioned, I was instructed to um, call out the names and have you folks uh, then state your name and say that you're here. So we know, first of all, I'll say that we know Amas is acting as a full member tonight as the clerk, Peter Shanes is not here. So I'll just go in the order I see on the screen. Amas Kedem. Here. Can you say Amas Kedem here, please? Amas Kedem here. Sorry, just following orders. Robert Stetson. <laughs> Robert Stetson here. Deborah Balsarek. Deborah Balsarek here. Chris Anderson. Chris Anderson here. And Greg Strange. Greg Strange here, if I didn't say that. And that is everybody. Okay. Um, so we have, for a change, we have a light agenda tonight. Two meetings, or two, two uh, items. So first up is continued site plan for 350 Washington Street. Uh, presented by J.K. Holmgren. Do we have anybody here for that? Yes, Scott. I saw Scott Rogers here earlier. Oh, wait a minute. Did it shows you how my old mind is going. I thought we had already approved this. <laughs> well, they, they were on, they did continue. Scott, do you have anyone else with you? I, I do. And they would be? Uh, Jim Pyatt is the architect and Dennis Dale is the landscape architect. And you said Dennis? And uh, Katie Torino from House of Possibilities is also here as well. Okay, I, I'm sorry, did you say Dennis? I don't see a Dennis, I see yeah. Katie Torino. Jim, do you know if Dennis is on the call tonight? Or is logged on? I just spoke to Dennis about 45 minutes ago. I thought he was going to be here, so I'm not, well, Dennis I don't is know. Here. If he could raise his hand, then I can make him a panelist. Dennis, so I'm Jim Pyatt. I think you already made me a panelist. Mm -hmm. Should I go back to mute or? Okay, nobody has raised their hand, Greg, so I don't know where Dennis is. Greg, you're muted. Most people like me that way. So the floor is yours. All right, 
For the record, uh, my name is Scott Rogers from JK Holmgren Engineering. As I mentioned with me tonight is Jim Pyatt, the architect for the project, and also Kate Torino, who uh, works for the House of Possibilities. Um, just to kind of fill you in on where we, where we are and where we've been, uh, our last meeting was, I believe, in March, a couple months ago. And at that time, we hadn't received any um, correspondence or review letters from Woodard and Curran. But shortly after the, uh, the last meeting, we did receive a peer review letter from them. Um, subsequently, um, you know, we went through all the revisions. We had actually a meeting prior to the letter just to kind of go through the drainage design and talk about how we approach things and the fact that it's a redevelopment, you know, half the site's already developed. Um, that was a pretty productive meeting. We were, Stephanie was involved in that as well. And then we, uh, we got a review comment from Woodard and Curran, made those revisions. Um, subsequent to that, we did receive an email probably a couple weeks ago, just a small handful of comments um, in addition to what we had already taken care of with that. So uh, we do have a letter and I believe it was uploaded last week from Woodard and Curran that says basically they're happy with, with the drainage design that we've presented to them to date. Um, also, with the last submission that we made, we did provide a new lighting plan. That was one of the uh, things we discussed at the last meeting. And we also provided you with a revised landscape plan. Uh, Stephanie had made a comment that um, there were some plant species on there that were, I guess they were cultivars. So we basically revised the planting schedule to remove those. And then lastly, um, Jim Pyatt and I, the architect, had met with the fire department, uh, John DiZallo, and had a couple different conversations with him about uh, the existing building and the sprinkler system that was there. Uh, Jim has made a lot of head, headway into discovering what was there as far as the sprinkler system. And there is a fire line that goes out to the street. Uh, we weren't necessarily aware of that earlier on, but we kind of went through a pretty extensive review of the existing uh, sprinkler system and we were out with all that. Um, and also John had um, made some comments about the fire truck turn plan. He was happy with that. And then we also talked about adding a fire lane to the uh, basically the right hand side of the building. So I'm not sure I have a letter from the fire department, but I do have an email saying that he was going to be writing a letter or an email to um, Stephanie or the planning and zoning board indicating his satisfaction as to where we are with the project as of today or as of right now. And that's pretty much it. If, if you have any questions, I'd love to answer those. Board members, have any questions or comments? I guess not. Stephanie, do you have anything you want to add? No, um, I think the, the few questions that the board had after the last meeting were answered. I checked on Thursday when I did, um, you know, my report was basically a summary of what had gone on at the first meeting. And I did not see a letter from Captain Zalo at that time on Permadize. Um, I can follow up with that. But I mean, if you've had the conversation, that's generally what needs to take place between the applicant and the fire department is that there's a conversation. Um, the stormwater, there were um, some conditions suggested they're pretty standard for stormwater management, but would it incur in, um, in their final report uh, um, felt the project complied with the stormwater management guidelines and standards. Great, thank you. Uh, is there anyone in the general public that has any questions or comments? This would be the time to raise your hand or chime in. I don't see any. So seeing none, if anybody would care to make a motion. This seems like a good time. Make a motion to approve uh, as presented. Second. We have a second. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none. All those in favor? Greg Strange, aye. Belsarek, aye. <laughs> Robert Stetson, I. I'm not seeing you on mute.
Need to hear from Amasa and Chris. Need to hear from me? Yeah. Good to know. Good to know. I. Okay, you both came in at the same time. Did you both vote in the affirmative? Good to Okay. Anderson. All right, that's unanimous. All right. Thank you. Good luck, project team. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Sure. Good luck. All Good right. Night. You as well. Um, next up, we have, well, I just lost my agenda, but we have a continued site plan review for Red Mill Road. I'll give you the address in two seconds. Uh, continued site plan review for 12 Mel Red Mill Road. Um, so I know on this that uh, following up on our last meeting, um, a, a deadline of the two Thursdays ago was agreed on for the um, attorney or anyone representing the abutters to submit a list, a final list of questions or concerns. I know that came in and I know staff, uh, Stephanie and various staff members in the town uh, worked on answering and organizing and, and that was sent out to the board on last Thursday or Friday. Um, so pursuant to that, I don't know, Stephanie, do you want to, is anybody going to present or where, how are we going to handle this? Well, I, I think at this point we have David Field with us, um, Sarah Price, Ben Levesque and other members um, that have previously participated um, from the town side of the project. I reviewed all the responses which were prepared by environmental partners and feel that um, they have answered the question sufficient to meet the criteria for evaluating a project through site plan approval. Um, I, I did have some conditions that I can go through. And one of those, um, I had a conversation with Dave Field about, so I'll talk about that when I get to it. The first one is that, you know, there was agreement that dark sky compliant lighting be installed. So I believe that should be made a condition. Additional plantings consisting of 25 Norway spruce trees paced 18 feet on center would be pl uh, planted within that 25 foot side yard buffer. Um, that in, and those will be planted after the final clearing is done or alternative trees. Um, and I think that, and Dave, you can speak up on this, but I think that would be at the, um, if, if that was something that the, um, the abutters would be looking for, but those would be, I think those were suggested to be arborvitae. But the, if those are requested, the number of plantings will decrease. And I think that's just because of the size that they would grow up to. One of the conditions, which is pretty standard for our site plan approvals, although we've shortened the hours a little bit because um, the response letter indicated that the standard hours of operation are going to be between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. So no work will occur between the hours of 5 p.m. and 7 a.m. and no work will occur on Saturdays or Sundays. The gate on Red Mill Road will be replaced to deter entry of off-road vehicles to the site. There was concern by the abutters that off-road vehicles would use the driveway as a raceway. Um, the one condition that um, Dave Field has said really they'd like to not agree to is a permanent road sign indicating pedestrian access be installed at the um, ungated portion of Red Mill Road. And the reason for that is that while everyone knows, you know, people in the area walk and use the area for nature trails, it's not necessarily something you'd want to invite people to. This is uh, water shed area um, it, and that's the purpose of the land is to protect the wells and the quality of water and uh, such signs aren't posted at any of the other water um, properties in town the water division properties in town 
and then standard um, language about stormwater management with annual inspection and repairs as needed. All inspection reports to be logged and made available to the planning board upon request. And then of course that erosion control measures as shown on the plan be installed prior to commencement of work and be inspected daily and replaced or repaired as needed. Okay. Um, I guess my, my only comment would be, uh, I, I mentioned this earlier, I don't think it's wise to put up Abravite with deer and uh, even the, the alleged quotation fingers, deer resistant Abravite are still pretty tasty to most of the deer around here. So that would kind of defeat the purpose. I hate to see the town waste their money on that. But anyways, that's just more of a comment, I guess. Um, so um, board members, do you have any uh, questions or comments? I just had a um, question about what the dust control measures were. Yeah, I mean, we'll um, have kind of, if they need to spray down any sediment, that'll be sprayed down during um, construction. And if needed, a street sweeper will come out and we do have a construction access entrance, um, which will prevent any sediment from leaving on the construction vehicles um, and getting onto the road. But if uh, needed, the con contractor will be required to bring in a sweeper to prevent the road. So is that just um, like spraying down like with a hose or is there a truck or... Um... You can use calcium chloride um, sparingly to help keep the dust, mitigate the dust, um, and water trucks with the hose. I'm not familiar with, um, what did you say? It's calcium chloride? It's um, just a, 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 a Isn't it like a deep Yeah, uh, but most likely it'll be water trucks that make it so that dust doesn't get into the air. Thank you. Yeah. Wait, can I come back to the trees, the alt alternate trees for a minute? Mm -hmm. um, because they're, they're actually shown it's attachment five in the uh, letter response from environmental partners. They do show uh, the green giant agravite as an option, but they also show Canadian hemlock, Northern red oak, and eastern red cedar. Yeah, my vote would be for the Canadian hemlock. Those work very well in situations such as this, both with limited sunlight, lots of sunlight close in, and uh, in deer, don't find them very tasty. But again, just my two cents worth. So any, before I kick this to the audience, any other comments or questions from board members? I'll take that as a no. I see we have one. Well, it, it, I have a comment. It, it's, it's more like a question. The, in item number one, how did the town determine that no sound will come from the side? I think the way this is presented is not, we uh, agree all together is try to figure out what is considered detrimental. And I think what the question should have been differently than the way it's being posted. The answer, on the other hand, clearly note for two of the equipment, uh, some kind of standard, I don't know if those standard define detrimental sound and the levels of decibels or whatever that is. But for the other two items that are the generator and the equipment inside the building, uh, I think the question should have been posed about any comparable or comparison with similar uh, type of arrangements and what the sound is and what is the level or something that will satisfy uh, whatever it is detrimental. That, by the way, I don't know what that is. Uh, very difficult to, that, that we need some kind of expert or people that say the standard for noise in a residential area should be this amount of decibel, 
uh, at certain distance, but I don't think that the question was properly posted, neither the answer uh, is satisfying what is detrimental or not. But on the other hand, I don't have any expertise specific to say what should be the answer to that question. I do wanna say that the generator is for emergency purposes only. So it, it'll it be tested once a week during daylight hours and will only be operational if there's a power failure or um, power goes down. And I, I believe it's, also, it's exempt in the site plan. Emergency generators are exe exempt under the site plan noise. Um, review. Um, and I think they are ask, uh, they are asking for some type of accommodation from the point of yeah. providing some data. So if a generator kick up on the middle of the night or, or something like that, uh, I think their brothers are trying to figure out what that is. It says on, on your answer that it has noise dampeners, but it doesn't say what that is, and it doesn't refer to any standard or anything. I, I granted that the question wasn't provided correctly, but I think we should accommodate some type of a technical quantitative answer and not what, we, what is being provided. Well, if I could jump in, as, as I understand this, now we do have a standard in our bylaw um, for this very purpose. And my understanding from the folks working on this is that the sound, with the exception of, of the generator, uh, the sound produced does not violate our bylaw standards. Going forward, just as in any other property in town, if there's a noise complaint, it's a very simple process to, to have it measured and see if it's under or over the standard. I mean, it's, that's why we have this standard. <clears throat> I might be able to shed a little light on that, uh, Mr. Strange, um, sure. Mr. Ketum. So um, a noise study is a very involved process. It would take, I believe we're looking at like four months to do a noise study. Uh, it's not required as part of the site plan review. Um, but as far as the generator goes, uh, the anecdotal, uh, sound quality if you're 100 feet away or sorry next to the generator with the enclosure it's equivalent of a small lawnmower running uh, 100 feet away so it's it's very very minor we have generators at almost all of our facilities in town including town hall um, the dpw these are all adjacent to other houses we have them in our other well sites as far as the building noise itself um, we have an existing wastewater treatment plant at 50 main street surrounded by apartments. Uh, we've never had a noise complaint there. That's a noisier type of facility than this type of facility. And uh, with our, we have existing wells now that have very similar process equipment in it. And if you go out and you visit those well stations, and I actually went out uh, last week and took a video of it, the only thing you can hear is birds chirping and sound of vehicles on the roadway approximately a thousand feet away. So these are just inherently not noisy buildings. And I believe environmental partners uh, provided the information on the specifics that we could get into, but anecdotally, these do not make noise, uh, and they'll, you know, they'll blend into the environment. And the sound you hear is going to be birds chirping, and and the other houses around us. Thank you, Mr. Fields. Amash, do you have anything else on that? No, I think, uh, Mr. Field, that. Uh, what you just explained is part of the answer that could be provided to the abutters about what this is, together with what uh, Mr. the chairman mentioned about the noise standard that is exist, already exists. That's a way to provide an answer. And just to be clear, we did provide this answer on our site walk and at the various meetings um, to the abutters directly. Um, any other uh, board members, questions or comments before I kick it out to the public? I, I just want to say that I read through the report and that I thought that the responses to the questions were uh, pretty informative. And 
I was satisfied with the answers and understood um, the project to uh, answer the questions that were raised. Thank you. So I see we have a hand raised. Stephanie, do you want to uh, see if you turn any? Oops, yeah. Good evening. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Strange, and thank you to Director Fields and Director Danielson for putting together both the response um, from uh, May 6th and the records request that uh, Director Field had put together and uh, Sarah Price for putting together the uh, additional information answering the questions. We, we understand um, the position of the applicant, the town and the board in this regard and the, the narrow scope of what they're tasked with reviewing. Um, and th the questions that we have, some, some of them are outside the scope of the board, some of them are within the scope. We appreciate the responses. Some of them we do feel are uh, either inadequate or lacking in areas. Um, but the the question, uh, the primary question that I, I think uh, Amos was referring to is what is detrimental and how do we define that? And it isn't for the abutters to present um, challenges to that and to present uh, causes to show that it is not that it is detrimental it is the requirement of the town and the, being the applicant uh, pursuant to the bylaws to show that it isn't detrimental to the abutters um, so that I think the onus is on the town to do so or the applicant to do so in this case and there are still questions remain that would leave us the abutters to believe that it would still be seriously detrimental to the abutters partly um, to a just a simple financial aspect of the uh, the property values, which was never analyzed and acknowledged, that was acknowledged in the response, and um, the impact during the construction, though it will be limited, it still we believe will be seriously detrimental to uh, the property owners, the abutters. There is a question in which uh, whether or not the there's a well four that you couldn't find on the maps, but we know to exist uh, that remains an open item we believe and particularly to that uh, that household at four uh, the, at that property at uh, four red mill it's considered that that would be um, seriously detrimental in our viewpoint to that particular property having this water treatment plant so close to that well um, but some of the questions, as Amos, uh, Amos acknowledged here, uh, weren't answered with specifics. They weren't answered with uh, directions. They were answered uh, or documents. They were answered more with uh, either platitudes or generalities. Um, but the biggest question that we've had uh, outside of being able, the financial side of it, being able to move it to another location, is how would it be to move it within the existing, um, uh, the existing 12 Red Mill? Road. We asked uh, in question number four, did the town conduct any financial studies placing the parcel uh, and what is the cost of placing it within the same parcel? And there's no answer to what is the cost within moving it within the same parcel, but to a less invasive way. And we asked, did you did you look to see if it would be less invasive within the parcel? So no, uh, they didn't. And I think that's you know, that's what we've been asking for this entire time. If there's a manner in which to to place the water treatment plant, which we understand is necessary, either at another location, which Director Field says absolutely not, or within the same parcel, but in a less detrimental way to the abutters. And ultimately that's a, we don't know, right? Because it wasn't looked at. So we still have that remaining question as to how, uh, if it was in within this particular parcel, how it could be less detrimental. Now, again, the standard requires that the town provide that information and to show that there are no detrimental impacts. It's not the requirement of the abutters to provide the opposite of that. So I, I would argue that the town has yet to do that. 
to demonstrate concisely and clearly uh, with specifics that there will be no detrimental use to the abutters. And that's consistently what we've been saying. We're trying to lessen that by the consideration of different trees or plantings or, or buffering, but that's only one component of the entirety of the, the scope here. Um, you know, that includes traffic studies. We had asked for, was there any considerations made as to the neighboring uh, traffic relations? And that it, that is a detrimental use. If, it, if the use increases, whether it's temporary or permanent, if there's an increase onto the, the roadways, that's gonna have a detrimental use to the abutters. And how is that, how is that provided for by the town that you're not going to have? So we came up with some ideas and gave some suggestions as to did you look at the cost of stop signs or uh, pedestrian walkways or other kind of considerations to perhaps lessen the burden, to lessen that detrimental use? And the town said, no, we're not looking at that. We didn't look at any traffic outside of uh, the road there, which is not the, the standard. The standard is detrimental use to the, the surroundings, right? It's not detrimental use strictly to the parcel 12 or the lot in which the site plan is for. It's how does it impact the neighbors? That is a question that the town needs to answer. And uh, while we appreciate the uh, the time that it took to produce all the documents and time that it took to respond, we still think there's some uh, finite details lacking from this, which would require the town to consider to make a demonstrative showing that there are no detrimental uses, uh, that it will have no detrimental effect on the abutters, which we don't believe has occurred yet. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Chairman Strand. Is there anyone else that cares to present any questions or comments? I see a Kathy and a Joe Cohen has put their hands up. Stephanie, you wanna? Yep, hold on. Oh, shoot, for some reason my mouse isn't working. Okay, I have to, if I promote Kathy to panelist, then she is going to have to, um, she's using an older version of Zoom, so it won't just let me allow her to talk. But then she'll need to leave the meeting to unpanelize herself. Can you hear me? Yes, just please to, to all folks, um, a reminder, we need your full name and address uh, before you start speaking. Thank you. Okay. My name is um, Kathleen Connell, and I live at 4 Red Mill Road in South Easton. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, so I am um, the one, the house that's set way back, and that is the closest abutter to this project. I am a registered nurse, and I've been a nurse for 40 years. And I, that's why I haven't been able to um, speak for myself at these meetings because I've been working. And um, now tonight I would like to voice my, my opinions and my feelings. Um, I we were really shocked to find this uh, project was well underway before we were notified of it, number one. Uh, we were notified by um, certified letters that were undated, unsigned, and stuffed in our mailboxes days before the conservation committee. So we found out in a very harsh way, uh, which is unfortunate because we live in this town and we're all as one and we all pay taxes and we all work hard and we, we expect a little respect and, and you know, consideration from our town. And we could have worked this out very amiably and not have to have had hired a lawyer had people had come through to us and been honest and open and forthright. So this came as a big blow to all of us, might I say. And my biggest concern are the children that abut this property that are near 25 feet away. I in my lifetime have seen such tragedy from children getting into positions, harmful ways where they should never have been put into, but they got into, even though they had diligent parents for the five minutes that they turned their heads 
There is two large lagoons going out in my backyard. There is a, a retention pond 25 feet away from a home with five children in it from the age of two to 12. I'm not understanding that there's no comprehension here about safety and awareness of the abilities of these children who have curious in nature and they, are, they have no fear. So I see, I foresee that this is not gonna be a good outcome Okay, uh, thank you. Um, Stephanie and Joe Cohen, I think, was next. Yep. Okay, I just unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, I'm very disappointed also just, to hear about just, just name and address, please, for the record. Thanks. Joe Cohen, 59 Norton Avenue. Great, thank you. Uh, I'm very disappointed. Uh, in the town and the way the uh, news has rolled out as well. Um, I think individually, everyone here is a good neighbor and tries to be a good neighbor. Um, but I would think of the highest, um, the highest thing that's invested in, in this board uh, is to represent our town as a good neighbor. And if I can make this personal and try to draw an analogy without really getting too confusing for anyone, if any one of you were my neighbor and you had 50 acres available to you, and then you put up a 7,000 square foot building, two feet high, 25 feet from my property line, I would have to say that you're not a very good neighbor. There would have been so many other ways of doing that. So I really would hope you could reflect a little bit about what your role is in this committee and represent the town as being a good neighbor. And I think you would have a lot of difficulty in putting a, a phrase, a word, a letter to any of these abutters and say, hey, my name is whatever name it is on this position of the board. And I want to let you know, I am a good neighbor. I brought this to your backyard. So again, uh, that's one thought. The other thought I would like is if uh, there's someone here that represents the people that drew up these plans, I believe there was, I have a question for them. Is there anyone uh, in that capacity that actually did the, uh, the site plans? Yes. Yes, okay. So my question to you is this, were you given any instructions at all to be cognizant of the people that lived in the neighborhood? Yes, I was, and I can let to be able to expand on that. Um, we, throughout the planning process, we relocated the lagoons, we relocated the septic, and moved um, portions of the proposed project around to be as far as possible from the um, abutting property as possible. All right, another question that I have for you. So uh, from all of what you're saying, there was no other better place that this uh, project could have been located on uh, the 12 Red Mill location. Is, is that correct? 
And we've provided the responses to you in the response letter, um, which is posted. So then let me ask you this. So this enormous project that's being put in there runs within 25 feet for a good section of a property line. Are you trying to indicate that if you did not have 25 feet there, that the project could not have been done because there was no other location for that building. Could you repeat your question? You've indicated, I believe, that the consideration has been done for the abutters in the location of this park. That it, there is no other location. You, finished all of the, the moving of the pieces. Is that correct? It, it's a balancing whenever you do a site plan, but yes. So let's say you didn't have 25 feet, which is needed for this project, along okay. one of the abutting's property lines. Let's just say you didn't have that, that this perfect location that you're referring to was 15 feet or 10 feet to that property line, that this project would not have moved forward in that location. I'm gonna defer to Dave Field, I believe he has something to say. Yeah, Mr. Strange, I mean, I don't, we can go on um, talking about hypotheticals on the amount of feet on various questions. If there's comments, we'll be happy to hear them as we have the entire process. Um, but again, we've already answered that this is the most feasible location. Um, based on all the factors that go into siting a facility like this, this is the best location for that. If there was a better location, we would have put it there. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Um, so then I'll just defer to it back to, um, I think you all have failed as being uh, given the responsibility to be good neighbors to our abutters. So um, that's my personal feeling. Uh, I think uh, that it's uh, not something that I would want um, to do to a neighbor. And here the, the town is doing it to a neighbor. So um, I know you have more projects coming up. I know there's something planned for Northeastern. Uh, I hope uh, you learn uh, and possibly reflect uh, about how this all went down. Clearly, you're aware that uh, feelings have been hurt. People feel like their property values have been diminished by this project. And as you go forward uh, with other projects, uh, if you could be a little bit more sensitive and uh, learn from this experience. That's my uh, hope and wishes. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Cohen. Appreciate your your input and participation. Um, Stephanie, I see one more. Um, John Paoni, I believe. Forgive me if I mispronounced that. Okay, and it looks like. Whoops, where did I go? Uh, hi, can you hear me? Uh, yes, if you could just state your name and address yep. for the record. Appreciate it. Hi, John Payone, 5 Red Mill Road. Welcome. How are you doing? Um, I can feel that this is going to move forward. Uh, so I'm going to switch up just a little bit. I'm going to focus on the three-way stop sign because I have kids that travel and walk down to the Rolling Pines Apartments, the white, uh, the white apartments down there. And in your uh, 26 questions, you said that's not part of the project. We all just lived through the 123 sewage and they went above and beyond with safety protocols. They put in temporary lights, they paved the road 
could handle the extra traffic that was going down Highland Street. They had details at first, police details. I I'm just trying to figure out who do I need to talk to because it doesn't seem like you guys are looking at this. Who do I need to talk to about putting in the safety about the extra 18 wheelers, the heavy trucks, the extra traffic going down Old Foundry Street, Norton Ave, for at least a temporary stop sign. Listen, you're gonna decide what you wanna decide with the, with the pumping station, that's fine. I'm trying to make it as safe as possible for my kids and all the other kids in the neighborhood. So you guys talk about being the perfect neighbors or trying to be the perfect neighbors. Well, how to lead me in the direction where I can get temporary stop signs right there for the increased traffic. So that's really Thank not you. under the, all right, you're welcome. Thank you. That's not under the purview of this board. But Stephanie, perhaps you can answer the process they could. Would you refer to Dave Field? Okay. Yeah, so Director the process Field. on any traffic safety concern is to uh, contact uh, either myself or the police chief or the fire chief, uh, or you can go to the board of selectmen to initiate a review of that. What we do is we, we collect data and, and then make a, a recommendation back to the board of selectmen or the select board. Okay, so even with the increase, this is just something that we would still have to go through that proce oh, that procedure. Yeah, and so the increase here, you know, with the Foundry Street or the Depot Street, um, or the, sorry, the Foundry and Highland Detour, uh, that was 21,000 vehicles a day that were being detoured. And there's a reason why we put temporary lights in and they're now gone. Um, the construction on this, uh, be very insignificant compared to the existing traffic on Norton Avenue. Norton Avenue probably has about 1,000 to 1,200 vehicles a day. Uh, you're talking a handful of construction vehicles a day. Uh, so it's not something that would rise to a level of a requiring a three-way stop. And there's an all-way stop that requires many uh, warrants. And I don't believe any of those warrants will be met now or during the construction of this project. But you're obviously okay. you're free to make that uh, request and we'll take a look at it. Uh, and I understand that, you know, I'm not asking for streetlights. I understand Norton Ave and Old Foundry Street are definitely different than Highland and Foundry Street. I totally understand that. But I, I am then, can I, I am requesting to look into this and I will call who I need to call. But, you know, every time I we bring up something, you guys say we don't need to look into that. Well, it's safety. I mean, listen, it's it's about safety. You know, you want to be perfect neighbors and, like I said, help us out. You know, you could throw us a bone and put in that safe in those stop signs. You're bringing 18 wheelers down that road, which they don't go down. You're adding an extra element that is not normally seen on Norton Ave and Old Foundry. So sometimes you have to go outside the box and, and say, okay, you know what, maybe they're right. We, we cannot go outside the box. That is a Maybe MUTC a requirement. We cannot, we cannot put stop signs where they're not warranted, but you're welcome to make that request and we can take a look. Okay. I just wish we lived in Northeast and have a nice day. Um, so Stephanie, I, I just noticed that uh, Kathy, if, um, forgive me, I forget her last name. She wrote in the chat that she was muted and didn't finish her input. And someone else chimed in to say she would like to continue with her concerns as a direct abutter. So okay, so I will unmute her. Let's see. Kathy, can you unmute yourself? I think you need to do it. Okay. Am, am I here? We can hear you. Go ahead, please. Okay, I just want to finish. Um, I would love this to turn out amiably and with no litigation involved. Um, my, uh, I do have a well on my property that's been here since I bought the house. I have been told by three environmental engineers, it's not if, it is when it will become contaminated from the unwanted elements that are being leached out of the town wells will then migrate into my well. And I was told this by DEP. That was one of the gentlemen that spoke to me at length. He did not see my well on the site. And I understand that the answer was because the Board of Health didn't have my well on their site. But the town does know about my well because they've come down and tested my water because I'm out in front of the town wells. So if anything gets contaminated, my well is going to get it first. 
So the town does know about my well, which was omitted accidentally, I guess, off the site plan, but I think it would have had a, a different uh, take on it if they had seen my well so close to the lagoons. And I was told by this gentleman that I do not want my well within 500 feet of the lagoons. He said, you do not because it is going to leach into your well and ruin your well. So what is my right to clean water? Where is my right to clean water? This is detrimental to me. And not only that, I'm going to lose property value on my home. I have worked long and hard for many, many years. I have worked two jobs. I was widowed at a young age and raised a daughter by myself, put her through college, put her, paid for her wedding, and, and I am paying for her master's degree. I have not had the, the, time, the money to save up for retirement. This is my retirement. This is going to create a financial hardship on me. The town has no, doesn't seem to have any consideration for the human component of this town because we live out in the outskirts. I guess we don't count. We do count. I, we have a voice. I have a voice. I'm voicing it now. I have many concerns. And my biggest concern is for the safety of the children, the 10 children that are in this close knit neighborhood and are within 25 feet of this project. And we know that children will get into things. And I don't want to see a tragedy. This is a, not, a, it, it is not safe and it is not appropriate setting for this project. This project needs to be moved down the road. And from what I could see, I thought that there was a, a possibility of it being moved down to well number seven for $600,000. I have someone right now who works for the state that is trying to procure grant money for this project to move it down the road. This is what my wish would be. This would, would be the wish of all the neighbors. And this would be end up being great for the greater good of all and not just for a chosen few. Because we're, we're now at this point with the sacrificial lambs right now. We're being sacrificed. Oh, my well not being contaminated is not is, is okay. It's okay by the town to contaminate my well. They clean out their wells and throw the excrement into my wells. Um, so nice okay. annual solution. I would love it. I don't know why we can't all work together. I don't know why we can't all work together. And I don't want to see this go to litigation. OK, well, well thank you. Um, so any further comments from the public? Or the board members, any questions or comments? Any presenters? Anything else to add? If not, board member care to make a motion on the site plan review. We will entertain it. Well, I'd like to start with a comment because this is obviously a, an emotionally charged um, site plan review. And I sort of emphasize site plan review because our, you know, at least as the planning board and I, you know, sometimes you, for whatever reason, even though we're volunteers, we're citizens of the town, I, I do think that sometimes we get lumped in with the town on town projects, but we're two different entities. I, I have nothing to do with what went into notifying the butters and things of that nature. But, um, you know, but I, I do understand the frustrations of the, the abutters and certainly if, if things weren't done in the manner that I as a neighbor would like, you know, 
for this type of a thing to be handled, I'd be frustrated too. But I just heard something in, in Ms. O'Donnell's um, uh, statement that, that is exactly what I feared when uh, the attorney uh, got involved you know, several meetings ago, which is she's referencing something that does sort of sound like a detrimental, a detrimental use that could impact an, adjo- an adjacent property, and namely her, her wealth. Um, I mean, you know, if that's true, that is something that we would take uh, seriously, and, and you know, it, it could potentially be something that we would consider when evaluating this site plan. But, you know, there's... Th- <laughs> The abutters have, have known about this standard. Um, there's been no evidence that's been presented that, that, that supports that type of a statement. And at this point, you know, I, I really don't feel as though as a planning board, we have much to work with in terms of um, you know, disapproving or adding more conditions. I mean, we have a limited review here that we're dealing with, and we're looking at, at factors that on their face, based on everything we have before us, have been met, in my opinion. You know, I don't speak for any other member of the board, but if there were was something else out there that should have been considered, you know, there's there's been plenty of notice. This, and, and, and nothing is before us that, or at least to my knowledge, Nothing is out there that would support that the town has failed to meet the criteria for approval of the site plan. And, you know, if there's something else out there, uh, if there is an engineer that has made these opinions, you know, or, or if that, that information has been shared with the town and, and the town has, you know, analyzed it and, and provided, I just don't know about it. I mean, what I know about is based on the record that that I receive and I review, you know, over the weekend before these these hearings. So, you know, I, I just I don't personally feel like I have enough to be able to disapprove of this site plan based on the criteria that we've received. And, you know, this is what the third or fourth hearing that we've had on it. And only tonight, you know, in the last 10 minutes have I received anything that even suggests that there is a detrimental use to the site. And I'm not talking about, you know, children going over to, you know, this, because I, I'm not even sure that that falls within the criteria. But certainly, if there is the potential for leaching to contaminate somebody else's property, you know, it, it should have been raised earlier. <laughs> that that's That's my personal feeling on it. That's all I've got, Chairman. Okay. Any other board members? And I see one hand raised. And I'm just—I I don't want to circle back. So, Attorney, if this is something new or a response, that's fine. But I, I want to keep this moving forward. I—I—I I, um, I, I concur with uh, Mr. Stanton as well. Okay, this. that's great. Steph, Stephanie, can you put? Yep. Hold hold on a moment. Um. Okay, so uh, Mr. Pambianco, you just need to unmute yourself. Thank you. Um, just briefly to touch on what the attorney Stetson said there, um, we did raise it in the last meeting. It was raised when it, uh, we had asked directly Director Field if he had had communications with uh, Jim McLaughlin from the Mass DEP, particularly for this specific question. Uh, which Mr. Field had not yet at that time. I don't know if he has currently have had that conversation with the Mass DEP, but to say it wasn't raised until tonight is absolutely false. It was raised at the last time directly to the town. So I just want to raise where, that. But where's the, so, I mean, you're, you're a lawyer. Where's the evidence? I mean, just saying something and asking a question about it is very different than presenting something concrete that can support your position. You know that very well. And if the first time you spoke, I said, are you going to hire an engineer? And the reason I asked that is because exactly of what I was afraid of. We were going to get this situation at the last minute, and there's no evidence from what we can actually evaluate what, you're, what it is that you're saying about a detrimental use. I have nothing other than your questions to support that what you say is actually true. And 
you know, asking one person if he talked to another person, that's not that's not evidence. And so if, if something had been brought to our attention in an appropriate manner, you know, I might have a different opinion than I do right now. That's what I'm saying to you. But I put you on notice the first time you came in front of us. And I asked you, are you going to hire an engineer to look at this? You said you didn't know. Yeah, that, again, uh, if you want to go backwards, I, I, I don't want to go backwards. Well, I, I expressly do not want to go backwards. I know you, I know that Chairman Strange, you don't want to go backwards. If the board member Stetson wants to go backwards to the first vote, it's due to the uh, being hired uh, because they only provide or provided notice at the last minute. So, you know, we've you've had time, but you've had time let me, now. Let I mean, me, hey, let me finish. Or <laughs> Chairman Stetson or Board Member Stetson, I didn't interrupt you when you were speaking. You're not interrupting me when I'm speaking. That's you have to give the same courtesy that that we afford you, uh, even more so, because you have to pay deference to the, the constituents here. Th that aside, uh, essentially what you're saying is that Kathy C Connell is not telling the truth, that she, her her evidence, her testimony here is false. That's what you're, that's what you're saying by s stating that you have no evidence. You have testimonial evidence presented before you as to the considerations of and what the conditions of her property is. No one's going to know her property better than herself. She's telling you that there is a well on her property and the conversations that she has she has had, she has hired an, an engineer. So to those to those points, you're absolutely wrong. You're just wrong. And I, I don't appreciate uh, the manner in which you, you go about doing this. You can reasonably ask, let me finish, you can reasonably ask questions you'd prefer to have uh, an engineer's report, that's that's fine. But to say that we'd never raise this is false. To say that her testimony, th there's no evidence, though you have her testimony here, is false. It's just simply false. And uh, we we weren't trying to be adversarial tonight when we spoke with you, but you made it so. Can, well, you well said, I, I don't think you have that. Been, now, now, now I've heard you speak for far longer than I've spoken tonight. So let me say a couple of things. And I, I do not mean to be confrontational, particularly with the abutters. But as an attorney, you know better. There is no, what you're referring to is, is hearsay that is being uh, referenced by an abutter in an emotionally charged situation. If there were an engineer's report that I could look at that would support that there could be some detrimental use that would impact an abutter or a neighbor or their well, then, then certainly that's something that can be considered. And I understand that, you know, you like to throw around false this, false that, but nothing I'm saying is false. We don't, we simply don't have the evidence. If you were to, if you were to have come here today and said, look it, we're working on an engineer's report. We have this issue. You know, can you give us another, you know, another two weeks to, to present the engineer's report? You know, you might've had a different outcome. But, you know, accusing people, you know, first of all, you're threatening litigation and then you're accusing me of making it adversarial. I, I didn't threaten litigation against you. Well, Specific, one of one of your what, clients what, did. But but here's the point. She didn't. She said she doesn't want to go to litigation. That, right. You're, that, which, that's is, not a, which is essentially a let's, let's that get on we point. don't this do is, what we're supposed to plan do. Review. This isn't a court of law. Let's make this less personal. Let's get on point. No. And I and I completely agree. And but all I am saying is, if 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 the request here is that they need another two weeks to get an engineer's report, you know that is certainly something that I would entertain. But if if we're just going to have to sit here and say, you know, well, someone talked to someone else who expressed some concerns about an environmental, you know, leaching issue, then then that is that is simply not enough. And there's been enough time. My point isn't to go back in time and to say, you know, hey, this lawyer should have had an engineer's report four weeks ago. My point is to say there was, you were put on notice at that time that that is the type of thing that would have had an impact and you still don't have it. So it's not that it's adversarial, it's that here we are, the third or fourth meeting in, and we have a very limited amount of information from, you know, from which to evaluate these concerns. That the abutters have raised, so that that's where I'm at with it. If if you look at my, 
the chat room right now, I believe that's Kathy stating that she will get the information that you're requesting. Um, so, and it's our, it's our yeah, third. Dave, I'll get to you when these, in a second. Yeah, just to be clear, I think it's our third. Yeah, um, we see it. Okay, Director Fields. Yeah, so I just wanna just shed a little light on this. The permitting through Mass DEP uh, will handle the discharge of our lagoons. It's clean water, clean drinking water that gets uh, discharged to the ground it, and it leaves behind in the sand beds, iron and manganese that we're filtering out. Um, there, we didn't fail to locate the well. We, we didn't have the well location. So we were, we used the property line as the, as a most restrictive and conservative way to show it. There is no setback from the lagoon leaching pit to a private well. Um, her septic system is probably closer to her own well than the lagoon leaching field. Um, so all these things will be handled and Mass DEP will look at that when we permit this. Uh, we'll look at the groundwater direction. It's highly unlikely that anything could ever go into the well. It's all the other, all the flow is going towards our wells. So it's going completely opposite direction of her well. And there's also town water. So town water can easily be hooked up if that was ever an issue. But we don't anticipate any issue with any private wells or their private well. And again, we're filtering uh, or discharging clean filtered drinking water into the ground. It will not have an impact on the wells. Thank you, Director Fields. So I wanna take the floor here for a minute if I'll be allowed. <laughs> and I wanna remember, remind everybody what we're doing. We are the planning and zoning board and this is a site plan review. This is not a special permit. This is not a variance. This is a simple site plan review. That's not to say that the project is simple. It's to say that our, our purview is rather simple. Several minutes ago, when a gentleman whose name escapes me asked about uh, the three-way stop. That, we have no power. The planning board is not, it's illegal for us to, to issue stop. We don't do that. There's a safety commission in town that does that. So that's why I deferred. What, what we handle is simple. Is the land zoned for the use? Yes, check that box. Is the building located within all of the allowed setbacks? Yes, check that box. Is the road and the existing conditions uh, safe for the traffic use. The road is being upgraded. And, and while I certainly am sensitive to uh, the abutters uh, in this area, the, the fact remains that we're talking to four, we're talking under, I believe, 10 trips a day to this. Uh, and, and the vast majority of those are, are not 18 wheelers. That's not to say, I, I, you know, I have three children. I raised them in town. I had my first grandchild. I, I understand safety. Um, but this use is allowed. This land has been zoned many, many years. Um, I think from the, the initial zoning of land in Easton, this land was, you know, municipal. Um, and this isn't, th this is a simple site plan review. After this, there are, as Director Fields just indicated, there are um, other permits to be had. And so a condition that, that, like, for example, that Kathy brings up. Now, I understand Member Stetson's contention on this. Basically, if I could paraphrase Bob, Bob saying, hey, you know, the town has come through with, with peer review. The town's presented everything in writing to have such a serious allegation come across and, and not have anything is, is a bit, you know, it's, a, it's, it's hard to, to slot at this point in the game. I, I understand you, you folks wish you were, um, and, and I agree with you, you should have been alerted earlier, but um, I wanna be respectful of everyone's in the process. I wasn't there, so I don't know. Uh, but, but I do know this, I work with all of the members of the town staff that are on here tonight. Um, many, many years, and, and they think of the residents first. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, I mean, this, this water, <laughs> this treatment plant is to improve our water quality in town. Uh, we have an excellent water department, we have an excellent DPW. And um, sure, you know what, I, I think going, if, if we had to do it over again, um, I, I would have been nice to involve the abutters early on. It's the first thing I said when I realized that, but you know what, we're not, we're not perfect, you know, mistakes are made. But we, we've gotten into the weeds with this site plan review more than we have in any site plan review in my 16 years on this board um, for, uh, for important reasons, um, to, to, hear the, to hear the abutters, uh, to hear the, um, their concerns, and to try and get the, the town and its employees and its um, subcontractors to, to provide information and answers to all, you know, to the questions as much as they can. When we get into budgeting and decisions, I get, that's not the purview of this board, so I'm not gonna entertain that here. We, you know, it's in, we, we are volunteers, 
I think we perform a very important duty for the town, but you know, it's, it's important that we, we stay in our lane. So um, anyways, with that said, um, and, and I just, one more thing, you know, the, 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 the issue that Stephanie, that Kathy, I'm sorry, brought up with potential contamination, that, again, that's not in our purview, that's, that's above our pay grade, that would go to DEP. Or, or and the director feels could speak that much better than I, but it, it may even go to more places than that. But you know, our our and we're not trying to pass the buck here, but our responsibility is limited in that: <clears throat> is this use allowed? Is the building located within? And this is all stuff that's been agreed to by the town, by the residents at town meeting. Um, and you know, I, I I caught some flack the very first meeting. I talked about being familiar with with your surroundings, and I certainly didn't mean to offend folks, but. I'm sensitive to that. I, I you know, we are, we're all sensitive to our land use, and <laughs> and um, but it's um, you know, people in this case, the town have land rights as defined by our bylaws, which were written by the citizens of this town and agreed on by the citizens of this town. So the process is working. It's going through the uh, you know, it's it's going through the the process that was developed by the residents of this town. Um, so, anyways, I. I'll, I'll get off my soapbox now. So I think we have, um, I think we've circled the loop on this as best we can. And unless there's board members that have anything to add, I would entertain a motion. Did you guys hear me? Is anyone going to make a motion or are we going to table this? So um, I'm okay to make a motion, Greg. So I'm let's just, make a motion uh, and then let's step, I mean, I'm sorry, Deb, let's make a motion and then after we have a second, we can discuss it. That's how I'd like to proceed on this. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to approve the plan as presented and as recommended. I will say there's a second from Chris Anderson. Okay, thank you. Okay, go ahead, Deb. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to go ahead. Um, I just wanted to be clear just because of that last minute uh, notations that I think you did reference in the chat. So um, you're just uh, making it clear that it's, it, it is not necessary for the well to actually be located on the site plan. It's obviously inside of the uh, boundary line between the two parcels. So I just wanted to clarify that that is what you said. We're, we're not, that is not a condition. What of, I said? Yeah. Uh, I did not well, speak about the well being on or off the plan. So you misunderstood. Okay, well, so let, just, let, let me let me just so director fields is the well going to be located on the plans going forward. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to ask the uh, butter to uh, provide us that location and we will uh, okay. add that to our, our plan and submit that to DEP for approval. Uh, when we seek permits from DEP. So Deb, if you'd like, you could amend your motion to include uh, as has been the standard practice of this board to include that and Stephanie could sign off on it that's on the plan. Um, yes, I'd like to amend my motion um, to include that the well will be located on the site plan as a condition of the approval. Chris, are you still good with a second on that? Yes, I will re-second that. No, it's funny that the dog answered. Um, Okay, and we have a second on the amended motion. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, I have a question for Mr. Field. Uh, can we uh, agree that uh, the, the noise level will uh, conform to the town bylaws? Yes, there will be no detrimental noise, will not exceed the bylaws. Okay, uh, th that answer my only concern, the rest I think are well answered. Great. Okay, any further discussion by the board members? Hearing none, all those in favor of approval of the amended motion, strange aye. Kevin, aye. That's an aye. Bell Sarek, aye. Anderson, aye. 
All right, that's unanimous. Thank you very much, one and all. We appreciate your, your input and your participation, and uh, we wish all well going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Director Fields. All right. Um, so we have, do we have minutes? Yeah, we have meeting minutes. I don't know no, if y'all. We don't have minutes from the last meeting. Okay. I was just looking at the agenda. Okay, no minutes. Yes. They, uh, chair's uh, report. I am no, the only thing I have to report is town meeting is next Monday. I'm sure you all want to sit right next to me in the front row. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Stephanie, um, did you say that we needed to um, have whatever people were promoted to panelists? I don't. I can't tell if they've been unpaneled or not. Well, I can't unpanel them. The way it works is it we're going to adjourn in two seconds. Yeah, so okay. I, I think it's a moot point, frankly. <laughs> okay. So, Stephanie, do you have anything to add? I have nothing to add. All right, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I have a question. Are we we're going to continue Zoom meetings for a while? When when this is going back to normal? Do we have any? We have not heard. I I really haven't heard anything on that front yet. Um, I think that you know the governor is talking about going to full reopening in the end of August. So I think we'll probably hear more over the next few months. Okay, few months. That's good. Mrs. Amos. <laughs> All right. Um, who, who Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Great. Motion approved. <laughs> All those in favor? Strange eye. Stats and I. Anderson I. Sarah. Great. Thank you all. Have a wonderful week or two. We'll, and uh, hope I see you at town meeting. Good night, all. Thank Good you. Night. Good night. Good night.